Hello YouTube, my name is Yamakar and I'm going to be showing you how to make hard mode easy mode on Banished. Um, I'm going to show you how to start off and then from there you can kind of just multiply the technique and take it from there. So it's kind of a tutorial video uh, just to show how to start off. So I've uh, made a brand new colony, we've called it uh, Dogville. Uh, and we're going to show you how to start. This uh, seed map is pretty good. Um, I have some excellent peninsulas here. Um, for fishing, plus uh, it seems like I'm an okay starting, starting spot. So the most important thing you want right off the bat is food. Everyone knows that everyone star uh, starves right off the bat. So food is one of your main resources you're going to be going after here. So the first thing you want to do, the first building I generally like to build, is a hunting cabin. A uh, hunting cabin is a very OP early game, um, and it gives you lots of food. The second thing is a gatherer's hut. These combined... Um, should be able to get you enough food to get your population up and going and be able to stockpile some resources. So I like to balance it pretty nicely there. Um, and then while everyone starts doing that, I am going to chop some trees. Get a little bit of starting resources there. I don't want too much of the iron. Um, mostly what I'm looking for is the stone. It's got a little bit going on there and we're going to start. So we will speed the game up here and watch our guys get to work. So they are going. Off to the races. So you got a little chopping going on here. Um, one thing I actually did quickly, quickly forget there is to build my uh, stockpile. Um, stockpile can really be anywhere, but generally you want it in your city center. So I'm actually gonna build my city center right where my wagon started there. We'll just throw it right there. And that's where everyone's gonna bring everything to. So super easy. So first, food. So we're going to get this hunting cabin and gather's hut up first. Stat. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Go, go, go. Slave camp here. This is like um, North Korea. I'm going to do some overhead view here. Watch your guys go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Okay. So what is our progress there? Let's assign a builder now. Now we have enough materials and they can start building. The second thing you're going to want built right stat is houses. So you guys are going to freeze to death if you don't build houses. It's not too many houses. I'm just going to build two houses here and I'm actually going to build two houses right in this area here as well. Um, why? Because this is where they're going to work from. So um, if their house is right here, they don't really have to commute per se. So. Seems to be a pretty decent strategy right now to make it your workers work um, right where they start or right where they sleep. And we'll continue chopping some trees down here. More trees, more trees, and they're still building. Okay, what we got here? Progress. Hunting cabin is starting, making some decent leeway. It's raining, it's miserable out. As per, banished. Our reserve of logs is low, 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 low. We need more logs. Let's go, guys. Give me those logs. They're collecting, they're starting. And we're starting to build our first building here. Builders hop to it. Reserve of stone is low. So one thing you want to remember with this game is uh, what resources are what. Um, the most important resource you have is food. Everything goes off of food. The second most is firewood, because you guys um, freeze to death, they're still dead. Uh, wood kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, wood builds you tools, which also builds you firewood. Um, with the tools, tools make people more productive, so it goes faster. So stone is like your luxury resource medicine or your herbs later on you start worrying about that but at the beginning you don't really have to too much um, and iron is just uh, to get everything upgraded there so we got our hut up I think yeah our hut up so let's build three guys in here and start collecting our food you can hear those trees falling down doing good making progress we got our laborers the next thing we need is our houses Go, 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 guys. Get those houses up. Before everyone freezes to death. Early autumn, so winter is coming, as the Starks would say. Winter is coming. Gather's hut is up. 
let's just see here. Our guys are still gathering wood because we have a couple of places here, so they're still doing their thing. It's okay. As long as you want to slow the camera down, just make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Let's get a couple gatherers in there. Next is these houses. We need these houses up. Stack, guys. Need that wood. You guys can do it. Go, go, go. Got the food coming in now, so that's okay. We have managed to avert crisis number one. So food is up. Now we just need our houses. Go, go, go. Build a house, build a house, build a house. Next, after building a house, is going to be firewood. Because they're going to have their house and then they're going to freeze to death. So we need our firewood up right after that. I like to kind of center everything on my commodity pile. Mostly my um, buildings like the blacksmith, um, tailor, tavern, um, woodcutter. I like to kind of centralize around my stockpile, but it doesn't really matter too, too much. The most important thing, the most important thing is making sure you keep your stockpiles high. Kind of game kind of teaches hoarding per se. So we got our houses up. We only have nine people who are houseless. It's late autumn. We're doing okay. We might have made the rush. Might have made the rush. It's got these two more houses to build here. You guys can do it. We have enough resources here as well, so we're doing okay. And then we got to build a woodcutter. So you guys don't all freeze to death. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hunting cabin. Gatherer's hut. House. House. These houses here, again, later on in the game, it's really important to keep your houses nice and close to where the people are working so they don't have to commute back and forth. You get more productivity out of them. Um, productivity is kind of key there. These guys are going to start freezing. Let's go. Get your houses up. You guys can do it. Don't want anyone to die today. What are you guys doing? Build, build, build. The reserve for food is low. Yeah, it's okay. We know about that. Get the house up. Okay, you guys are dedicating resources to that. So we're going to pause that because it's important, but it's not as important. And we need this houses up stat. Let's go. Haven't lost anyone yet. Don't want to lose anybody here. Want our people to live to a thousand years old. Gamma. North Korea demands that you continue working. Firewood is now officially run out. My guys are slacking here. So what I'm actually going to do now, because these guys are slacking so much, is we're going to cancel everything we have. Any task you guys have is canceled, and you guys got to build these houses. <clears throat> houses I need up now. Doing okay. Okay, there we go. Now they're clearing, and the houses are going up. Our food is nah, it's doing okay. I think we're flat line per se. We can actually dedicate one more guy to a gatherer. So now we got seven people tasked in the food collection business. We got one laborer and two builders. Hopefully we get these houses up right now. We still have six homeless people. Our food's actually going up now that we have seven people dedicated to this. Um, Doing okay, our stockpile is doing decent. We are 40% full, that's what we like to see. We can see a little bit of stockpile. One um, tip when this house gets built here is to kind of pause your game for a bit. It's not really pause it, but don't build really anything. Build some roads, build a forestry hut, um, and then kind of hoard some resources, but don't actually advance building any more houses. The reason for that is you can kind of stockpile some resources and get ready for the trader. The trader is going to be your next most important thing to do because the trader can get you animals, which are the best way to get resources. Um, well, food. Animals and sheep. Sheep can make you better, better clothing, and uh, beef is probably your most productive um, food source. So one person can get the most amount of food per season, and it's reliable. I like the gatherer's hut and the uh, hunting cabin. The uh, the farming and the, uh, the the fields like the uh, sheep 
Not the sheep. The uh, cows are the most reliable food sources. Especially once you get a bigger city going, and that's the way to do it. Okay, so we got three homeless people now. We got our last building here. Our guys are freezing to death. This building is almost done as well. Our guys are slow. Our builders kind of slacking. Let's go, builders. Build that house. Last house up. Then our people are good to go. We didn't lose anybody. Quick, easy, painless start. You can do it a thousand times the same way and you'll be okay every single time. Doing good. And now we just need this built. The builder's going to move to that right now. Now the resources are there. We only have one laborer now. Another one laborer. We're going to collect a little bit of resources right there. And there we go. Much success. Got our wood cutter. And now we just try and hoard some resources. Next thing I do here is Forestry Lodge. Forestry Lodge, fantastic addition to the building family here. Um, why this is a good addition to this is because you want to keep the trees here. Because um, it keeps the animals. Throw the Forestry Lodge right there, it keeps the trees. So now all of a sudden you have a gathering hut, a hunting cabin, and a Forestry Lodge all in one. And it's kind of a uh, trio of effectiveness. Our firewood is a little bit low. That's okay. We know about that because we just started with our woodcutter there. My next favorite thing is to actually build stone roads. Why would you build a stone road here, would you say? The reason for that is this is the most commonly used road. Um, any road that's used very, very, very regularly and you know that there's always going to be people walking on it, upgrade it to stone road. You wouldn't want to do it for a road that's not used very regularly, but a road that's always used, upgrade to a stone road and your people just motor along on it. You get the most productivity in return for the road. And that's what we're looking for here, is your return on each investment. Because each decision essentially is an investment into the future of your game. So, invest properly. Invest your decisions, invest your people. Because now, a very easy start, we got a little bit of food stored up here. Um, and the next thing I would build is a fishing dock. Then I wouldn't build any more houses, I just hoard, hoard resources. With a fishing dock, you do not want to build it like this. The reason for that is you only have a half circle of area where the fishing dock can actually fish. Here again, not worth your while. Here, definitely worth your while. Reason why it's good here is I have almost uh, three quarters of a circle of area I can fish. And that is the most productive fishing dock you can possibly make. So just right there, I got a pretty much full circle or three quarters of a circle. And that's about as efficient as I can make it. So I throw that right there. I know that this is going to produce more food than uh, my workers will use. The workers who work on this uh, fishing lodge here. I'm just going to quickly build their house. This is my fisherman's house. And then build my road. So now I got my fisherman, my wooden house, my woodcutter. He's at his not fuel limit. Need more trees. More trees, guys. And my food is still going up. So I'm at 461 from where I was. It's going to go up and up and up and up and up. And now my wood is doing meh. It's okay. I still have my three laborers though in this forester hut right there. just popped up. Just throw these guys right there. Now I got reliable, renewable wood. I have two builders still. And these two builders are going to finish building this. And as soon as I finish building my fishing dock, they are going to work on it. So then I have managed to flatline my city with about 13 workers and I'm going to continually hoard more and more and more food. Um, and my firewood is going to be renewed here with this uh, wood chopper guy. I'm just going to task him out of that for a second um, because there's nothing he can do anyways. So I might as well not have him do that. Have him kind of gather some resources and then once I get some more wood, I will... I will get him chopping again. And then you can almost continually keep him there. Firewood, fantastic for trading with. 
Just get a couple of uh, probably 400, 500 stacks of firewood. Generally, it sells for three or four or five. You know you can get it pretty easy. Just uh, make sure you change your fuel limit right there. And then once you build your trading port, you can trade all your firewood. And that can be your main commodity to trade. You don't want to trade anything that's actually good. Like your tools and stuff later on, they're worth more than your firewood is worth. So I wouldn't uh, use those, generally speaking. So there you have it. That's a very basic how-to start guide. Uh, you notice my food's still going up slowly, but as soon as this fishing dock gets built, they'll be good to go there. So I got my forestry hut, my hunting cabin, and my gatherer's hut with their houses accordingly. So as you can see, this guy is a hunter, gatherer, hunter, forester, forester, gatherer. And I probably have someone over here who's working there. Gather, hunter, forester, yeah. Builder, 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 gather, gatherer. So I could actually build two more houses in this little community. And this is my primitive food collection community, you could say. This is my industrial stronghold. And this is my fishing village. Um, fishing village, again, your fisherman, fisher dock can hold four people. So you can generally build two houses right there. And you're definitely going to return more food than these two houses will consume. Uh, and then you kind of just want to amplify. So just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And then uh, once you keep building that, then you're good to go. So that's an easy way to get a town to 100. And you got this huge map, and you can just keep expanding, build another uh, forestry hut, hunter's uh, cabin there, um, and uh, gatherer's hut. And you can rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Um, once you start getting around 50 people, you're going to want to probably build a herbalist. Um, reason why you're going to want to build a herbalist is because I religiously seem to be dying of the plague. Um, maybe my guys just don't shower. Possibly. It's a possibility, but uh, you're definitely going to want to try and build a herbalist so they can kind of heal your guys of measles and whatever else they decide to uh, pick up um, from the wonderful, wonderful world of Banished, what they came from. So finish building up here so that is the end of my how to start a town in what's in uh, banished pretty easy so if you uh, like this video feel free to uh, comment comments are more than welcome and uh, i will see you next time this is yamakar and have yourself